Hello, this is Nick uh, here from Gorgon Reviews, and I'm speaking with Sarah Holland, director and writer of Egghead and Twinkie, which had its Seattle premiere this year during the Seattle International Film Festival. Egghead and Twinkie is about Twinkie's coming out story, a road trip, and just discovering yourself in high school. Thank you so much for spending time here, Sarah. No, thank you so much for having me, Nick. Uh, to get the one of the hardest questions out of the way first, what is the first movie movie you remember seeing in theaters? Oh my God, <laughs> I'm really going to have to go back in time. Uh, it might be Finding Nemo, uh, or that's the one that, that sticks with me. Because uh, uh, when I was a kid, I, I was born in Japan and I lived there until I was nine. And I, I distinctly remember going to see Finding Nemo at a cinema in Japan. Um, and it was a pretty magical experience. I mean, the movie still holds up pretty well. Would they have showed that with uh, subtitles or would it have been dubbed? I think we just saw it in English. So I don't um, know if they were showing it both ways. <laughs> okay. I have no idea. I've never been to Japan. <laughs> um, you have said in past interviews, you wanted to base this on your own story of growing up and coming out. What percentage of yourself would you say embodies Twinkie? Um, I would say it's it's more so like uh, the emotions that I'm pulling from my real life in terms of like the characters themselves. They're honestly all very different from me. Uh, I'd say the things that I have in common with Twinkie is just uh, growing up. I think I felt like a little bit of an outsider. Um, I was always a creative kid, like drawing and, and creating things. And Twinkie is kind of an aspiring animator for me. I was like an aspiring filmmaker. So I'd say that those are the things we have in common, you know, when I was a teenager but beyond that like her personality is so different from me uh she's very impulsive and like emotion driven whereas I think I'm actually more like egghead and that I'm like very logical and think things through and I'm like a worry wart as well which I think egghead is <laughs> so maybe uh both of the main characters are just different aspects of yourself yeah yeah honestly I think all of the characters have like a little piece of me in them mm -hmm. Um, well, you said you grew up wanting to work with films. So when do you think you actually wanted to, like, when did that get in your head? You wanted to direct films? Uh, well, I started making really terrible short films when I was like 13, 14, um, and I made my siblings act in them. So, you know, they're interesting to watch back now as an adult. But I, I really think that that's where it started is I, I wanted to tell stories um, prior to kind of me experimenting with filmmaking. I, I wanted to be a writer. So I was that kid that was like 12 years old and writing a novel. Um, so when I found, you know, film and uh, my parents gave me like this really terrible flip camera that was like, I don't know, <laughs> a potato quality. Um, but when I got given that camera, it was just like, oh, you know, combining all the aspects of storytelling that I loved with creative writing, but now I could put visuals to it. Um, so that's really where it started and just kind of grew from there when I, I went to film school and so on and so forth, just kept creating. Um, Sabrina plays the lead character and has to kind of carry that roller coaster of emotions in the film. And she does a wonderful job. How long of a process was it to find the right star? to find the right Twinkie. Oh, yeah, I saw quite a few um, Twinkies. <laughs> and I, I was very picky about that role because I, I mean, it's just so important. Um, I'm such a stickler about acting. Um, I'm an actor myself. Um, I love working with talent. Uh, so it was a hard role to fill because uh, we shot the entire film in Florida uh, and there's not a huge Asian American acting population in Florida. We're like a small but mighty community. Um, so my options, I guess, were limited. Um, but I was looking under every rock and cranny to see like every person that could basically audition for this role. Uh, and I remembered Sabrina. We had acted together in a commercial like a year and a half prior. So I'd met her one time and we had like talked for like five minutes. Um, but I remembered her and I tracked her down on Instagram and DM'd her. And um, I was like, I know this sounds super sketchy, but I would really love for you to audition for my film. And thankfully she said yes and put her through a series of auditions and callbacks. And she was the one. I mean, her essence is just so similar to Twinkie as a person. I really think she puts a lot of herself into the role and she's amazing. I love hearing about so much about how social media has helped find people for the film and get the film going. It's kind of well documented in your efforts to go from short uh, to using crowdfunding. 
like I saw the one of them on Sight and Seek, so site that website. Uh, Seed without, of Spark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, what a professional advertisement to get your film made. That was really well done oh, too. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, and through TikTok and all of that. But was there any point when you were working through all these hurdles that you were like the closest to potentially giving up and thinking this was not something you could handle? Oh, many a time, <laughs> or I don't know. There, there were a few moments I think where the going got tougher. Uh, definitely when the pandemic hit, that was a, a pretty huge deal for us because uh, we were planning to shoot the feature in the summer of 2020. And we had won this production grant that was supposed to come in and we had everything lined up X, Y, Z, uh, all set to go. And then COVID happened and uh, it wasn't safe to shoot. So we pushed production by an entire year. In the process of doing that, we lost funds, we lost locations, we lost crew. Uh, and it sucked because we had all of the momentum going and then it had to come to a complete standstill. And I know that we are far from the only production that was impacted by COVID in that way. Um, but because we were such a micro budget kind of ragtag thing to begin with, um, I think we felt the impact of that even more. Um, and uh, yeah, that was that was a moment where I thought, oh, how are we going to pivot? Uh, it was a moment I knew we had to change our strategy. There's like no other way. Um, and ultimately it ended up being kind of a, a weird silver lining, you know, despite all of the obvious, you know, downsides, the one plus side was that we had an extended time in pre-production. So I was able to do a few additional revisions on the script. Uh, and we actually, it was during that time that I turned to TikTok and, and started marketing the film on TikTok, which ended up being massive for us in terms of crowdfunding and getting the word out there. Nice. In the movie, it's mentioned quite a few times that Egghead was smart and which college he was heading to. And that was like the, the ticking clock, one of them of the film. But it was never talked about what Twinkie's goals were in her future. Um, it was all about her right now. What do you imagine would be her next steps in her life? What is she wanting to do? Yeah, I think Twinkie wants to be an animator, but she's not quite sure how she's going to get there yet. I think Egghead is very by the book where he's like, okay, I'm going to get this score on the SAT and then I'm mm -hmm. going to go to Stanford and I'm going to major in this. And he's kind of got his whole plan figured out. I think Twinkie is a much more emotion driven character who's a little off the cuff and chaotic. Um, so I think for her, she probably <laughs> didn't do very well on her SATs or her ACT and, and maybe she doesn't know where she's going next. I always had it in my head that she was gonna go to a community college for at least the next year to, before she kind of like figures things out. Um, but my hope for Twinkie would be that maybe in her second year, she transfers to an art school and she can uh, continue pursuing animation. That's always what I had in, in my mind. Uh, also on Egghead again, um, there is one quick shot of Egghead, I think, at his computer desk in his room. Um, do you remember the books he had on the desk with him? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I saw a couple titles. I recognized some of them and didn't know the others. And I was like, oh, I like those. Maybe I'll like the other ones. Maybe you'll remember. <laughs> I I don't. Oh, my gosh. I'm so impressed. What were some of the titles that were on the desk? I just saw The Name of the Wind um, by Patrick Rothfuss. And I was like, okay, that's a fantasy book that's pretty popular. When it, and then, you know, it was gone. It was already flashed away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that would be courtesy of our amazing art team, our um, production designer, Luke Sanders, and art director, Maggie Hudak. They thought through all of that stuff. And, um, you know, it was collaborative. But I think the books, that must have been Luke. I think he pulled some of his own books for Egghead's <laughs> room. Because uh, Luke... <laughs> Our production designer at various points he was like yeah i really relate to egghead and i think he pulled up quite a few of his own belongings to mm. put in egghead's room awesome <laughs> um you're obviously on a film festival circuit right now um with egghead and twinkie traveling around building up hype for those who want to see movies like this in theatrical or streaming what should they do to help out or seek it out oh well Go to your local film festival, um, support independent filmmaking in that way. I mean, it's always so great when we come to a festival like this and like, I don't know anyone in Seattle really anymore. Um, so I got to our screening and, and didn't know how many people were going to show up. And it was a pretty packed house both nights, um, thanks to kind of independent moviegoers that like to show up and support. So I guess I would say go to your local film fest. 
Um, and also if they want to follow Egghead and Twinkie specifically, uh, we're on social media. Um, our handle is at Egghead Twinkie Film on both TikTok and Instagram. And we always post where we're going next. Um, so people can kind of keep up with that. And uh, we're hoping to get distribution by the end of the year so we can get it on some streaming platforms and people can watch at home. Uh, once again, thank you so much for spending your time answering some questions about directing your first feature length film, Egghead and Twinkie. If you missed Egghead and Twinkie at the Seattle International Film Festival, it is one of the virtual films available from May 22nd to May 28th. Um, however, that works for SIP. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so thank you again. Thanks so much for having me. This was so fun. <laughs>